So after I created this card set, it got me thinking about these other little cards that I had in my stash that I bought at, at a garage sale many, many years ago. And I particularly loved the little bitty size of them. And so what I did was I took this concept and created a mini version. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today as our tutorial. And this is a fabulous way of using up our six by six paper pads and using up specifically when they have the cut aparts in there. There's another one. So it's a great combination and I'm going to be um, creating today's project with the Jen Hadfield Heart of Home. And as you know, we all just been hauling this, so that uh, is a little apropos. And um, I was able to use the cards and the, you know, full paper design as well. So let me go through first what our little mini card set looks like. I did some layering uh, throughout this as well, and here I have some like orange glitter cardstock, and then layered this on top, and then did just a little bit of Winkostella on the spider there. So when you open it up again, I used a Velcro dot um, for the closure, and this time I the fuzzy part of the Velcro dot I. Um, painted over with a black permanent marker so that it would blend in with this side rather than sticking out as white and then this side I left as clear. Now I did um, create like a little side pocket here to put like stamps or labels if you wanted and that will be part of the tutorial as well. Over here I did just add a little haunted house like stamp and little witch sequin there for decoration. These are so tiny you guys. I love it. So here is the size pocket that holds the envelopes and cards. It's so adorable. I love little things. <laughs> so again I have coordinating cards and envelopes. So let's go through these. Now for the first one I did something a little different instead of using the 6x6 pad to do the decorating piece. I used one of those holographic um, stickers that I got from Target last year. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. It says trick or treat and then it switches to candy corn, little sunglasses, adorable. Layer that on some green cardstock there and then of course the base of the card is using uh, pages from this 6x6 pad. On the inside, this one goes this way. I did cut out some of the little pieces of candy and added them there for decoration. And then the card that goes with it is the candy corn paper that I created into an envelope and I cut out and um, rounded white cardstock to go on top of each of these envelopes. So that's the first set. The next one I created has a glitter cardstock and then layered um, image from the paper pad. I used a little sequin here, well not a sequin but a rhinestone right there and Winkostella on the ghost. I'm sorry, I keep getting so close because there's so little. <laughs> so uh, the paper itself looked like this. I cut two out of this piece. I think that is so adorably cute. And on the inside, I added some sequins. This says boo and a little ghost here. You may not be able to see it. It's in white. And the coordinating envelope for that is this one of Ghost. So that goes together. So the envelopes go landscape, portrait, landscape, portrait, landscape, something like that. 
Um, I just wanted to do something a little different on this one. Here's our next card. It says, Batty for you, has a little rhinestone. I added some little web sequins there and some Wincasilla on the bat. And then on the inside, just put some bat sequins in there. And here is the coordinating envelope with bats. Our next one says Pumpkin Time. It has glitter paper, some rhinestones there, and Winka Stella. And when you open, I put some pumpkin washi tape up top and a little pumpkin sequin down here. And our coordinating envelope. And then the last little card has glitter paper layered as well and a rhinestone and a cobweb. When you open it up, I put some washi tape here of a web and this red sequin spider. And here is the coordinating envelope. I did like these little, they're like little burst. So that is this set. So adorably fun to create. It was super easy. You could get this done in an hour or so, if not shorter. I'll just tucks right in there and closes up. Very cute. So now we're going to get started on creating our mini envelope card and open box set. And one of the first things you want to do is select your 6x6 six six pad. As I mentioned, I'll be using the Jen Hadfield Heart of Home. I have selected the paper that I want to be the cover, and we will start with the cover. Now, just a little bit about the measurements. So, for the template, I, I created a template, and it looks like this. And um, for this design, you would need a piece of paper or cardstock that measures six and a one sixteenth by four and three eighths. Now, because uh, when I created the Halloween set, I was wanting a different uh, paper on the outside than the I made with the cards and envelopes. I was able to cut it at six and six sixteenths. But because we want to try and use up our six by six pads, today we're going to use a six by six piece of paper and see how it comes out. I think it will be just slightly under and we can certainly fix that by using ribbon or lace. So that was a long explanation of that. <laughs> so let's get started. So once you select the decorative paper that you want to use from your 6x6 paper pad, you want to cut that down uh, to be 4 and 3 eighths in width, and of course it will already be 6 inches in length. Now I already did that and did some videoing, and then I realized I missed a score line, so I'm going to come back and show you using a yellow piece of cardstock. I noticed the white was messing with the autofocus, so hopefully this will be better. Okay, so this is a little tricky, <laughs> but I'll have all the information written down below as well as show you here. So the first thing we're going to do is take our uh, decorative paper. The long side will be at the top and we're going to score at one, one fourth, at one, three and an eighth, and three and seven eighths. Okay, now I'm gonna go over those with pen just to make sure you're seeing them. Okay, a fourth, one inch, three and an eighth, and three and seven eighths. The next thing we want to do is rotate the paper to the right. 
and we're going to score it at two all the way down. Okay. Next, we're going to rotate it back to the left, back that way. And at the two inch score line, which is this one here, the one that we made all the way across it, we're going to go at four and a fourth and score. However, don't do it yet, we're going to go down to the line and score. Just score up to the line or down from the line, okay? So we're going to find our four and a fourth at the top. Don't make any marks. Go down to where the two inch line across was and then push and score. So it will look like this. Got it? Then what we do is turn our paper back to the right and we are going to score down to this last score line at one and a fourth. So one and a fourth all the way down to the last score line. Nothing should go beyond that. So when you're done, it will look like this. Okay? I hope this makes sense. Uh, there is a purpose for it. <laughs> so now that we got that done, we'll move our scoreboard out of the way. And what we're going to do is some cutting. Now I'm going to do the cutting on the actual uh, piece that I'm using for the uh, base of the card holder. I had gone in and made that additional score mark here after I realized I had forgotten it. So what we want to do with our card this way, we want to cut this section out. So this gets cut out. Okay, we're just going to do the cutting part to begin with. The next thing that gets cut out is this little square and these two pieces. for me to see my score lines on this white piece. So then our piece looks like that. Okay, now for some more cutting. With our piece like this, we're going to go ahead and cut straight across we're going to cut from here to here straight across and the same on this side. You may want to angle these a bit when you cut them like that. And this little piece here gets cut off. I think I should have continued doing it in the yellow. So it's easier if you bend that down, then you can cut this little piece off here and then do your angling. That will look like that. And then if we turn it around, we'll take it, turn it around, and we're gonna kinda of do the same thing over here. So then when we're done, it looks like that. So again, on this side, we're just going to cut up these lines and angle it in a little bit.
So to clarify, we're going to be cutting this out. We're going to cut here on these lines. We're going to cut these out. These will be angled in. On this side, we're going to be cutting here, all the way here, cut here. This gets cut out, this gets angled in, and these two pieces get cut out. I hope that helps. That makes more sense. Make sure that these are angled. It'll help it later on. Okay, so that is what your piece looks like when you're done. If you map it on there, that's what it looks like. I hope this is helping and not confusing. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to constructing the cover. So really the next thing we want to do is burnish all of our lines, fold them and burnish. And these on the bottom, the decorative part is on the outside so you want to fold these inward. Okay, so everything is burnished. So what we're going to do is these um, will get folded in here. This end flips up and these will tuck in. So that's the construction. And these little tabs get pushed in. I hope that makes sense. Um, so one of the first things that I do is glue these little tabs to this part here. So it will be like that, okay? I'm just gonna use some art glitter glue. Now you want to make sure you align that so there's a nice box square there. And then that just gets pressed together. See those two pieces there? Let's try that again on this side. Put glue on the outside of the little tab there. Bring this in and these two pieces here get aligned. There we go. Now the next thing I do is push these little tabs in. Put a little glue on the back side of them. And then push this flat against the back. So when you do that, make sure these two get aligned flat, the side, and this little box corner here. And on this side, make sure it gets aligned as well inside this score mark. It's always good to kind of fold this to see if everything's working out. And then you can use your bone folder to burnish. And then fold that over. So here is when you can see that there's a little bit of difference there, but we will fix that in a bit. So that's the main construction of the card and envelope holder. So now that we have our base all put together, what we are going to do is some decorating. And I'm going to use this Celebrate It by Michaels and add that to the edge here. And I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac to do that.
And when you adhere this, you want to leave just a little bit over the edge like that. Okay, we have our ribbon adhered. And for the front, and we could have probably done this before we glued all this together, but you know, hindsight. <laughs> so what I've done is take a piece of coordination's cardstock, cut that out, cut down another one of those little cut aparts from the six by six pad, and I'm going to adhere that together like this layering and then down on the front, like so. So I went ahead and glued these two pieces together, but I wanted to mention that when you are adhering it to the front of the holder, you want to then measure, or you know, place it between the side edge here and where the um, ribbon begins. you could certainly use lace or whatever you like to tool to do some layering. I just like the cardstock because it really makes the little cut aparts just pop. So there's what that looks like. We'll give that a little burnish and maybe add a little rhinestone to it. I picked these up at Pat Catan's before they closed. They're Doree Self Stick Gems. They're really small. I seem to like the smaller rhinestones rather than the large ones, but that's just me. So here's what that looks like. Now on the inside, what I noticed when I was creating my uh, first version was that it's better to make sure that the inside flap or the cover is very sturdy. So I would definitely recommend if it's white and decorative to put another decorative piece here, or if you're using a double-sided piece of paper, you know, or cardstock, I would then add actually something there to strengthen it. So that's what happened with this one. This was a double-sided cardstock, and what I did was added my pocket this way to make this part of it stronger because this is where it's going to get all the use, opening and closing, right? Right here at the edge. So you want to make that sure that's really sturdy. So with this one, because it isn't double-sided, we'll add a decorative page here, and then we could just put our pocket here instead of over here. So on the inside, we're going to cut some additional pieces to layer there. I'm going to go with the solid to mirror the front. And for this piece here, I cut it at 2 and 1 16th by 2 and 5 sixteenths. That will go there. For the spine, I cut that at 11 sixteenths by 2 and 5 sixteenths. Sometimes they might be a little less. It really all depends on your preference. So. If you don't like dealing with the 16th, you know, create a border around it, however you like. Now for this piece, I created it so that it actually goes down over these little flaps and covers that a little bit, which is nice. I'm really liking how that turned out. And this is 2 and 1 16th by 11, well, 1 and... 11 sixteenths and then I cut the little pocket that will go on top of here at 
one and a half by one. Here's how that looks once everything's adhered. Really cute. And again, remember that's going to be a pocket. Now, um, for the closure, I'm using Velcro, and these are 3 8 of an inch. That is my preference because they're small. And I got these off of Amazon, but they are slightly cheaper at Hobby Lobby, and I just didn't wasn't going there, so I got them off of Amazon because it was easier. So what I do normally is figure out the placement on this side. And then close it that way. Make sure you get it aligned when you close it. And then press. Now to add um, some additional glue on the back once you have it all figured out would probably be a good idea. I did that on the last one and it made it sturdier. And there you go. Since this is kind of creamy white, I'm not going to color that in like I did with the Halloween example. I'm just going to let that go. Um, you really, it's not that noticeable. You can add ribbon to this if you wanted. You would have to add it underneath your layers here in between, you know, the burgundy and the top layer. Um, I just think it's kind of bulky. To have the big bow on the side and so I kind of like just having the velcro now if you want you can decorate this piece but I'm not going to because I like the foil decoration there that's already provided so that's it for the card and envelope holder next we will be creating the cards and envelopes So before I start putting those together, I just wanted to show you some of the supplies that I used. The Paper Studio cardstock glitter pack, I've used that. I use Miss Sparkle & Co. Papery. It's the marble paper, um, but it's on wood, so I like that a lot. And then um, for one, I use the Bow Bunny Double Dot Damask. And these are all like layering pieces. I've used some Timeless cardstock by coordinations and then I use this galaxy glitz paper really just the pink one for part of a layering piece So to put the envelopes and cards together I already have them all cut out and so I'll go through one with you and then probably fast forward through the rest I actually use my Cricut to design the paper size as, or the card size, excuse me, as well as the envelope size. So that made it really easy. I'm going to share the link to that Cricut file down below for those that have that. Those that don't, let me know if you need a template or anything like that. I would be happy to provide that. Um, but the card base is three and three fourths wide or should I say long? <laughs> and it is two and a fourth inches wide, okay? So three and three fourths inch long by two and a fourth inch wide. And then you're going to, of course, score in the center, and then your card will end up being one and seven eighths by two and a fourth when you get that folded. 
what I've done to decorate the front, I used the wood paper I just showed you and I cut that out. I've used my crocodile corner chomper, the a fourth inch, to round the corners of this piece. And this layering piece measures one and five eighths by one and seven eighths. And then this is a cut apart from the paper pad and that's going to be layered on top of here and on there as well. And then I will probably add a gemstone where that little white dot is for the high. And this little piece measures one and three eighths by one and five eighths. Now I am telling you the measurements, but it actually all depends on what the cut apart looks like for this one. You know, it measures totally different. It's one and a half by two. So you really have to go by what type of cut apart that you're using, how you like it to look. I liked having a, you know, a, a pretty good amount of a border around it. And then again here, um, instead of an eighth of an inch, it's just slightly probably bigger, but not yet a fourth of an inch. So it's really your preference on how you like to decorate them, but I'm gonna kind of show you just what I have done. For the envelope, um, so of course your envelope needs to fit a one and seven eighths inch by two and a fourth inch card. So of course across it measures two and three eighths and then the width would be two and one sixteenth. Okay, I hope that helps you. Um, so let's just get started on putting this together.
So there's all of our cards and envelopes that we created. I hope you followed along because I know a lot of you have this uh, paper pad since it came to Tuesday morning. And then what we do, you know, however order you want them or it doesn't really matter. We'll just put the cards in and our envelopes. And if you want, you can add a white label to the front of those. And we'll just tuck those behind the cards. And there we have it. Our own little mini cards and envelope box holder. I love that. I hope you have enjoyed all of the projects that you've seen and created today. And I thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time.